Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about a couple of other tips. A lot of tips that I did miss out on the first video. And so if you guys remember from my last video, I did say that there were about like 28, 30 tips that I had to share. And so in this video, I will be sharing another 13 tips because 13 plus 13 is 30. All right, without further ado, let's jump straight into our first tip. And the tip that I want to start with is actually probably one of the more important ones, and it's about the spire. So you guys already know the spire. These guys are pretty hard. However, if you are struggling on a particular floor, there is this button up here, which is clear record. And if you press this clear record button, you will actually see a bunch of team comps that other people have used to clear that particular floor. But yeah, like have a look at this one. Maybe it will give you guys some ideas on like what to do to solve the problem. Honestly, a lot of these floors are are like very very puzzly and so like you know even like the archetypes can really help you on top of that bonus tip i think you guys have realized but like each spire each of the floors in the separate spires are actually the same and what i mean by that is like floor 13 of the water spire is actually the same as the fire spire and so by the time you're able to push through one of them you'll have experience for the other ones you kind of know like what the mechanics are and that's really really good because it gets a little bit nutty tip number two and so for the next few tips i think we'll spend it inside the colossus there's just a lot going on in the Colossus and like I think there's actually quite a fair bit to talk about. So the next tip that I want to talk about is this guy down here. It's the workshop. So when you're going for like A2 or A3, Ascension 2 or Ascension 3, you are very likely going to be like suffering from grinding for those Ascension materials. And so what I wanted to show you guys, well you guys already know, right? This is where you craft the Ascension materials. At that point in time, I do believe like level 3 workshop is kind of a priority. However, to be honest, like I've cleared 814 and I've honestly not used the workshop too much. Much. With that being said though, like I can 100% like see the value in this workshop. There are a lot of mats here that I'm eyeing actually right now. I'm like, oh wait, actually I can craft these guys. But yeah, A3 is a great place to stop. Actually on that note, like bonus tip here, like level three is a great place to stop in all of these rooms. And the reason that level three is a good place to stop is because like you get an extra deployment slot for each of the rooms. So for example, this starlight one, I believe I have two people deployed to it now. Yep, that's right. And so yeah, that's really good because it actually actually gives us like some pretty sweet effects. Tip number three, and this is a really interesting one. So you see dispatch down here. So you have like a whole bunch of people assigned out to each of your different rooms, right? However, when you go to dispatch, you actually cannot dispatch the characters that have been assigned to the different rooms. And so for example, if you had like Charon, he's actually assigned to the bridge. Charon will not show up as one of the units that you can send off. And so if you're wondering why you're not able to use a particular unit, that's why, because they're probably working somewhere else. I mean, it kind of makes sense right they can't be like assigned to a place and sent out for a dispatch tip number four and it's also about dispatch actually it's a pretty good one and what it is is that you should be looking out for something that is looking like a little bit unique and what i mean by unique is like this one right here actually so this one is guaranteed a book i didn't notice it until just then but essentially on top of these like kind of base items you can also get books as well as furniture a lot of the furniture however it is like character lock so for example like uh if this one had a furniture one over here it would be like oh you you need Uriel to be able to like get this furniture piece. And so at that point, all you need to do is make sure that Uriel is there and you will get it 100%. Actually, I just pulled that statistic like out of my butt. I actually don't know if it's 100%, but I've gotten every one of them so far. Like I feel like there's no RNG in any of it at all. Tip number six, and it's that you can actually break down like your Colossus materials to get drones, which is really, really good. And by drones, I mean fireflies. I'm sorry, guys. I'm too used to the Arknights terminology. So here we're in the crafting menu in the workshop and if you look down here we have a colossus material and so from this menu you can actually break down like the colossus patch or the colossus patch 2 stuff like that and in return you will get some drones so like this is actually really good because like when you farm that like colossus material stage you're going to be getting a lot of like excess materials like the lower level ones like the colossus patch 1 and so as you approach like level 4 or level 5 of the buildings you actually don't need these anymore and so what you can do is you can convert them into drones and then like kind of speed up your progress to like colossus 5. I've actually done this so much because I've been pushing Colossus like really, really hard. And I definitely do recommend this. So like keep this in mind. So now I'm moving on to tip number seven. And it's that when you get your affinity to level six, you will actually get an extra icon. So you guys already know as you boost the affinity of your characters, you get a little bit more stats like this. It's not like ultra game breaking. It's probably not going to like help you push that extra spire level. But yeah, I just wanted to let you guys that like at rank six, so you guys can see this is rank five right now. You actually get an extra icon from that character. And so that's really 
really, really nice. From my perspective, it gives me a lot of incentive to like go and max out everybody or at least get to level six because I'm a collector and I want to collect all those icons. So whilst we're here in the character menu, let me talk about tip number eight. And that's like leave your equipment kind of till last or at least after like A2. So this is Carleen's equipment. You've got attack plus 60, defense plus 20 and HP plus 100. However, like the mats that are required to actually upgrade this equipment is like it's quite significant. So you guys can see we need like 10 of these white knight stones and we need 800 of the sublime. It actually costs quite a fair bit to be able to upgrade these guys for like quite a minimum gain to be honest. And so it's for that reason that I would say probably after A2 and some people even push it till after A3. I just think that the amount of stamina that you're going to sink into this farming this guy over here, it's just not going to be worth it. Like you could be sinking it to farm A3 and A3 is just going to have like a way bigger impact. Like for example, for some like characters, they're going to get a dual element. They get upgrades to skills, they get upgrades to stats. Like you guys already know what it is. So yeah, I would say like push A3 before you like get into the equipment farming. I have not actually done the equipment farming stage before. This is from like, I think the freebies that they gave me. Tip number nine. Well, this is more of an observation, right? And that tip is that not all characters and the stars were made equal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no sh So I want to start off by talking about Ascension 3 for like the five stars and six stars. And the reason I want to talk about them is because like you should not have the expectation that every single character is going to be getting a dual element. At max Ascension, some units are going to get dual elements. However, that is actually limited to only five and six stars. When we hit max Ascension, for example, on Miss Blank, and she is a four star, Miss Blank and all of the other four stars, they will only ever have one element. On top of that, three stars can actually only go up to Ascension 2. And so yeah, it's not really a bug. So for example, your Peppy, if I just quickly click into her, you'll realize that she can actually only go to A2. With that being said though, you cannot sleep on the three stars. Like for example, we've got Peppy here. She is actually one of the best three stars. She provides a utility that nobody else provides right now. And that is being able to teleport within like one surrounding cluster on a zero round cooldown. What that means is that every single round, you can reposition yourself in one of those eight squares. And that is honestly like really freaking big. There are a couple of other like three and four stars that have like kind of unique abilities at this point. But obviously as the rosters get rounded out, like, you know, they might get power crept or whatever, but like, you know, for, for now at least, like Peppy is like, all right, guys, next tip, we are at tip 10. So I want to talk about Phyllishai. And this Phyllishai was bestowed upon me for a low price of $1.50. I want to really talk about this Phyllishai because Phyllishai is just like so freaking good. Yes, I did pay to win her. But like if there's anything that you're going to pay to win in this game, I would suggest getting Phyllishai. And the reason is she is such a solid unit. For example, let me just start off with her skills. You can see here teleports to any location and also regenerates the team's HP equal to 250% of Phyllishai's attack. So therefore, along with this stuff down here, increases healing factor by 10% for every enemy within blah, 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 blah. You can see that her teleport and her heal, neither of them are dependent on like blue squares, despite being a blue character. And that's what makes her like so freaking strong because she can actually fit into any team, especially into a red team where like, you know, your only healer is Alice and she's not overly good. Obviously, you can't use her in like other teams for Spire, but like, you know, she is definitely there for your other needs, like story or whatever. But yeah, just coming back to it, Phyllishai is just such a solid healer. Like if you need a healer and like you don't have one for the other elements, she is your gal. Speaking of teleports, let's talk about tip 11, which is abusing teleports to like complete those survive rounds. So I'm sure you guys have come across these stages. I think this one is like Spire 14 or something. But essentially in stages like this, like what you really want to do is like abuse the teleports and abuse the painting. Because what you could do is you could end up like going into a corner, luring everyone into the corner and then just teleport to the other side. And that is honestly like pretty funny stuff right like so if I just like even do something like this right and then I, all the monsters are actually going to come towards me and I'm just going to come over here and try not get caught and then I'm going to like probably move over here come down over here I can only be hit by one monster and the next turn you can see I have a teleport so I'm going to be flying away guys and I'm going to be like going whoa that's what I'm talking about see ya boys and then what I can do is actually use that storage strat that I talked about in the last video here honestly I could just double click my character and then like we can skip the turn and do nothing because I don't want to move anywhere. I'm going to do exactly that and then they're going to come towards me and then like when they get too close, I'm just going to go fly away again. And as you can see, I have my Carleen up here. I could teleport over here when they get too close. For example, like if I just like skip my turn again and then they're coming towards me and then like, you know, oh no, I'm surrounded. But actually, I'm just going to fly away again because like this is this is so busted. And then I'm just going to like sit here in this corner. Like this is how I've been cheesing all of my stages with like blue element because I 100% respect that like a lot of the other 
other elements don't have that many teleports. Personally, I was fortunate enough to have Michael and Carleen who are two other teleports. And then on top of my Phyllis I paid a win that has like put me in a position where I can just like cheese these stages so easily. So I respect that like this tip is not for everybody, but if you guys do have the characters, you guys can do something like this. All right, let's get out of this stage and let's talk about tip 12. Tip 12 is quite an interesting one. So if I click up here, you can see chapter reward. And what you see here is a four seater so far. And that is honestly my tip because like at this point in the game, mood has been really, really hard to come by. At this moment, I can only think of like two or three ways that you can get extra furniture. You buy it from the secret territory shop, you get it as a drop from dispatch or you get it from here. And as we all know, mood affects like kind of the frequency at which your characters give you gifts. And a lot of the time, those gifts are actually loom members. So it's in our best interest to boost our mood as much as possible. And so it's for that reason, you gotta go and snag this so far, man. But that involves like getting 42 stars on every one of the chapters. Yeah, I said every chapter. So what I'm saying is that you don't get a so far every chapter, but if I went into like another episode, so for example, we're in episode six now, I'm gonna hit chapter reward and we get a drink machine from this one. Honestly, I think this is quite a decent tip because a lot of people tend to like ignore the mood, especially because like furniture like right now is just a little bit hard to come by. So I kind of understand that. And so with that being said, let's hop over to tip number 13, lucky last. And so what tip 13 involves is this guy over here. So this is essentially like your growth quests. So across eight days or realistically more like two weeks, what we have is like a whole bunch of quests in which we get a bunch of star flares as well as loom members from these presents. So some of these ones are actually going to be a little bit hard to get. So for example, this Colossus mood like getting 4730 is actually like proving a little bit more harder than I thought it would be. But again, for this one, you guys should be buying out the furniture from the secret territory and trying to get those furnitures for like from the dispatches. Obviously, you can't control one of them, so just do your best. However, the one I do want to talk about is this one down here, which is clear level 15 in four spires. Honestly, for a lot of people, this should be relatively realistic. However, it does mean splitting your resources. So there are two ways to look at this. A, you actually go and push all four teams to be able to get to like level 15, which definitely means that you have to put in like some level of investment, but like you get 100 loom amber in the long run. However, the problem with taking this approach is that you're probably going to be stifling the progress of your Colossus in which like you could be building your mood and then you could be getting more loom amber like from your dispatches or like from like the people coming in like and giving you gifts. There's actually just quite a significant investment that you need to put into your teams before you can get level 15 for your four spires. If you can achieve it in 14 days without like screwing over your progress, then by all means go get it. However, the real tip here that I did want to bring up is that to get this guy down here, you can actually like not do all of them. As you can see, I've obtained 68 of this like blue thing and I only need two more quests. That could be this one, that could be this one. However, I also have another one back here because nine times eight is 72, but I only need 70 to get these five star flares. And so what that means is that you could technically like skip out on two of the quests. Obviously, if you guys can do it without like too much hassle, like it's in your best interest to clear all of them. But what I'm trying to really say here is like, if you can't do this one, don't stress out about it because you can like skip two of them and still get the star flares here. And I guess with that tip, tip 13, we are now at the end of the video because I've got no more tips left for you. Honestly, there is actually, wait, there's one more tip. Bonus tip. Let's go. Tip number 14. Tip number 14, our bonus tip today is probably the biggest tip of them all. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And so if we head into the settings menu, you'll see that there is a help center up here. And if you click onto that, I'm going to deny that because Alchemy Stars does not need that permission. And then you can click into beginner's guide here and look at that. It is a collection of tips. So many questions are actually answered here. There's actually so much content here. So yeah, if you guys have like a spare like four hours and you guys have nothing to do, consider reading through the beginner's guide because maybe you'll learn something, but maybe you won't. Who knows? I will never know. But yeah, beginner's guide, lots of tips. Oh, are Carleen and Uriel limited time characters? No, they are not because they will be added to the mainstay recruitment pool. But yeah, essentially this is an FAQ with a lot of like really frequently asked questions. Whoa, look at this one. Will there be a PvP mode in the game? There are no PvP related modes in the game at this time. Yeah, no sh <laughs> All right, I think we've had enough fun here. So let's wrap up the video. So guys, secret question, which tip did you find the most useful? And if you guys didn't find a single useful tip, you guys had better give me a useful tip because you know, sharing is caring and I would really appreciate that. But yeah, drop that in the comments below. Did you learn something new? Which tip was your favorite? If not, then you better give me a tip. And I just want to say that if you do leave a comment, I do really appreciate that because it means that you've made it to the end of the video and I am very, very thankful. Okay, moving on. Let's show off my little Uriel again because she's so cute. 
you. If this video has helped you or you found it kind of entertaining in a way, then consider a like, a sub, a comment, a pin, a follow, a pin. If you guys are having any issues, drop a question down in the comments below. Otherwise, you guys could drop by the Discord. The Discord is in the description. And if you guys do want to support the channel, there are different ways that are also in the description. We've got a membership thing. We've got an affiliate thing. But to be honest, if you guys have already gotten to this part of the video, man, screw that. Watching the video is already support enough. So again, thank you. And so this video has to come to an end. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.